On today's Alex and Answer segment, we're talking about transmissions, specifically dual clutch transmissions. Right here, I have a 2014 Ford Focus Titanium, and this has Ford's PowerShift dual clutch transmission under the hood. It's a six-speed unit, and it's relatively similar in design theme to the dual clutch transmissions you'll find in everything from a BMW M6 to a Volkswagen TDI with a DSG transmission in it to the brand new Porsches with their seven-speed dual clutch transmission under the hood. All these transmissions operate under a very similar principle. Before we dive straight into dual clutch transmissions, we need to talk about how traditional transmissions operate. First, let's talk about the traditional automatic transmission. The first thing to know is, in a traditional vehicle with an automatic transmission, we have an engine over here. We'll put cylinders right like that. Then we have what's called a torque converter. First thing to know about a torque converter is that basically it's two impellers, they're like fans, and then this one is driven by the engine and it causes fluid, or you can think of this in an air corollary, causes fluid to move over and then causes this other turbine to spin. Now you can think of this sort of like using a desk fan to drive a wind turbine to generate electricity. The same sort of thing is going on inside the torque converter. Now that's what makes an automatic transmission vehicle able to stop at a stop sign and not stall the engine like a manual transmission would because you have this thing that's not physically connected all the time with one another. Now, of course, there's an obvious inefficiency here. So anytime you're doing this sort of thing, you're losing some uh, energy to heat and to other losses inside the transmission. So to solve that problem, modern automatic transmissions use what they call a lockup feature. And basically, you have one portion of the torque converter here and the other mating portion right here. There's a clutch pack that engages right in between them, and that gives it a direct connection more like a manual transmission. Now, of course, these two fans are still spinning around inside the transmission fluid, so there's still going to be some energy lost in there, but it does improve the efficiency of a traditional automatic transmission. The important thing to know here is that this setup right here allows the vehicle to stop at a stop sign without stalling the engine. The next thing you need to know is a traditional automatic transmission uses a series of planetary gear sets in order to change the effective gear ratio of the vehicle. And so we have a sun gear here, we have planet gears, and then we have this ring gear here right on the outside. Now, it doesn't really matter how these operate. If you want to know more in depth about a planetary gear set, then let me know in a comment section down below and I will try and get a video up on that. All you really need to know is that automatic transmissions use this style of gear. A manual transmission, on the other hand, uses more traditionally cut gears like this. This one's rotating that way, which causes that one to rotate that way. Pardon my drawing skills, they're pretty horrific. So let's put this all together. Inside a dual clutch transmission, we have what looks more like a manual transmission than an automatic transmission. So we have rods inside, we have gears on sliders that are meshing with one another like that, like you would find in a traditional manual transmission. We also have the engine over here. That's the engine. It's a really bad engine drawing, mind you. And then we have a clutch that connects the engine to the transmission. So we'll call that a thematical drawing right there. So we don't have a torque converter. This is the primary reason that dual clutch transmissions are more efficient than traditional automatics is because we don't have this torque converter sucking up things. Now the other reason that dual clutch transmissions are more efficient than traditional automatics is because of their gear sets. This style of gear set is more efficient than a planetary gear set in general. Now there were some early attempts at realizing this efficiency with what they called roboticized manual transmissions or automated manual transmissions. You will find some of these on sale in the United States, something like a diesel Ram ProMaster van and the current generation uh, smart car. Those use an automated manual transmission. So it truly is a regular old manual transmission with a clutch pack that is roboticized. It's driven by a little robot inside as well as the shifter. So the computer is doing all the shifting and all the clutch work for you, but inside it's basically the same as a traditional manual transmission. Now there are some obvious deficiencies with that. You have to disengage the clutch, you have to change gear, and then you have to re-engage the clutch. And that shift is going to take longer than a traditional automatic. Now the way that they solved this, and mind you we're going to be taking a look at a conceptual drawing here, so this is not a realistic drawing. The way that they solve this is actually with two transmissions. So we have two transmissions here, on either side of the engine. So right here we have the engine side of the clutch and then we have clutch A, for instance, and clutch B over here. Now, on clutch A side, we have thematically, again, not a true representation, we have gears two, four, and six. And then over here on this side, we have one, three, and five. Now, Manufacturers will put reverse on either one of these, so we'll just go over here and we'll also add reverse to this one up top. It really depends on the original design of the transmission. 
So as you can see from this diagram, what we really have is two transmissions in parallel inside the same case. One's handling the even gears, one's handling the odd gears. On this side, they have a common output that connects them to the wheels on the car. Now let's talk about why you would want this style transmission. If we engage this clutch pack right here so that we're in first gear, first gear is now engaged in the vehicle, this second transmission is actually already going to shift into second so that way it's ready to go. So if we want second, all we have to do is disengage this clutch right here and then very quickly engage this clutch. That leaves all of the shifting to be done at a time where you're already in a gear. So you don't need to disengage the clutch, shift gears, and then re-engage the clutch. All you're doing is disengaging this clutch at the same time as you're engaging the next clutch. And that way second gear is already ready to go. The process then repeats itself and it transitions back from this transmission onto this transmission for gear three, and then from this transmission back to that transmission for gear four, for five, for six, etc. Now, as with any transmission design, there are some obvious compromises in a dual clutch transmission design. If you're going sequentially through the gears, this works very well. If, however, you're skipping from, say, gear six to gear two, then this shift may take longer and it may not feel quite as smooth as a shift from, say, gear six to gear three because you're swapping from this transmission to the next transmission. The other thing to note is that you don't have this torque converter here, and the torque converter in a traditional automatic is what allows it to stop without stalling the engine, as well as creep along very slowly. If you want to creep along slowly in a dual clutch transmission, you engage first gear and then you slip this clutch. Now obviously you don't want to burn out the clutch, so the computer is trying to weigh slipping the clutch too much, not engaging it, engaging it fully, etc., to try and keep you along at that creep speed. That does result sometimes in a jerkier feel. Now some dual clutch transmissions put this entire clutch area right here inside a fluid bath and we call those wet clutch dual clutch transmissions. You'll find those in most Audi products, a lot of Volkswagen products, etc. Those have a wet clutch arrangement. Now Fiat as well as Ford, they're using a dry clutch arrangement and the dry clutch arrangement gives you a slightly lower loss in this system because they're not swimming around in fluid. Supposedly, they're also a little bit easier to service because they're not swimming around in the fluid as well. However, dry clutches tend to be a little bit more grabby. They don't slip quite as well as wet clutches, and so it can result in a slightly jerkier feel. The other thing that dual clutch transmission drivers sometimes complain about is when you're coming to a stop sign and you don't make a complete stop. You do sort of a rolling stop or a California stop, whatever it is you want to call it, and your transmission is, say, in gear three or gear four, and then you want to take off again, so the gear has to change down to gear one, for instance. You get kind of an abrupt feeling in the car. That's both from that gear change as well as the fact that at that point the clutch may have been disengaged even. So depending on how fast you were going, you may have either been in a higher gear and the car needs to command a lower gear right away, or you actually may have been in neutral. The clutch could have been disconnected and now it needs to re-engage to accelerate off again. And sometimes the car does that in somewhat of an inelegant fashion depending on how hard you're pressing on the accelerator pedal. It happens most frequently if you're coasting down to a stop slowly and then you accelerate rapidly after having rolled around a little bit and not actually stopped. So to wrap things up, we use dual clutch transmissions because they're lighter, they're more efficient, and they also shift faster than most traditional automatic transmissions. That's why you find them in something like that 2014 Ford Focus that I was taking a look at, and that's also why you'll find them in performance vehicles like BMW's M products as well as certain Porsches. Well, there is obviously that penalty on smoothness. I think that the weight reduction, the performance increase, as well as the efficiency increase over a traditional automatic definitely makes this a worthy option. And it's really obvious why Ford is pushing them in something like a Fiesta or a Ford Focus to really improve their efficiency numbers. Now, admittedly, they feel a little bit more normal than a CVT or a continuously variable transmission, and that's likely why certain manufacturers have stuck with them in their economy vehicles or high economy vehicles, because it really makes the driving experience feel a little bit more normal to the average driver out on the road than a CVT does. There are still going to be compromises, however. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Go ahead and let me know what you think about dual clutch transmissions down there in the comment section down below. Whether you think that's a worthy trade-off, the smoothness for the efficiency and the weight reduction. Go ahead and find me over at facebook.com slash alexandautos. You can email your questions to alex at alexandautos.com and I'll see you next week.